Last episode, we started our European adventure with a five-goal thriller until Liverpool brought us crashing back down to earth in the Premier League, showing that West Ham still have a long way to go if we want to reach Europe's elite in this career mode. But as ever, if you're enjoying the series so far, please feel free to like and subscribe, and let's get into today's episode. And of course, we will be starting out with your comments. If you want to make this as realistic as possible, West Ham are known for our terrible recruitment of strikers. That's why some of our best strikers have been converted into that role, like Bowen and Arnautovic. I recommend making a youth scout go to Austria for a physically strong striker because a big and physically strong striker is kind of like West Ham's philosophy. So yeah, that is a very, very good point. As everyone knows, in the absence of a top-tier striker, I have had to utilise Jared Bowen in that position instead. But with him only getting two goals in his opening six games, clearly he is not the long-term option in that position. Now, when you reference West Ham having the philosophy of bringing in big and physically strong strikers, no one else epitomises that more than this man, Mikel Antonio, a West Ham legend who has been a towering figure up front for the club for the last several years. But with him being 33 years of age and his contract expiring within the next nine months. And with West Ham historically known for having such a good youth development program, I totally agree with your idea of bringing someone in who is physically strong and can play in that striking position. Hopefully, now that I've set up a scouting network, Douglas Gillies can find that very person. I think West Ham needs some serious depth in the centre-back position. Someone young, Antonio Silva is a great one. Dedic is also a great versatile player from Salzburg. And if you want a veteran centre-back, I think John Stones is a great shout. So yes, once again, you are absolutely right. It can be argued that defence is the weakest area of my squad. And with my captain, Kurt Zuma, being my highest rated defender at just 80 overall rated, and with him being 28 years of age, it is more than likely that he has reached his ceiling. So far, he has formed a pretty decent partnership with the likes of Mavropanis and the likes of Nayef Agird. But if we want to take this team to the next level, we're certainly going to have to try and see if we can improve on at least one of these back three. Antonio Silva is a very interesting shout. With him being six foot two and just 19 years of age, clearly he has got the best years of his career long ahead of him. As you can see, I haven't quite scouted him yet, so I don't exactly know what he can add to the team. But signing someone like him certainly would fit into the more youth orientated system and philosophy that I'm trying to impose on this West Ham United team. Now, Amar Dedic is a very interesting one. I know full well from my career mode with RB Leipzig, having signed him to play it right back, that he does have an overall rating of about the mid-70s. And as you can see, he does have pretty decent physical stats. However, with the likes of Borussia Dortmund being able to snatch him up fairly quickly on this career mode, would he want to make the move to West Ham United at this point in his career? Now, John Stones is a very interesting shot and someone whom I had not considered one bit. With him being 85 rated overall, there is no doubt not only would he come in and be the best defender in my team but he would be the best player in the entire squad however with him being 29 years of age and only just having won the treble with Manchester City starting in the Champions League would he want to make the step down to West Ham United at this point in his career perhaps not right now but maybe as he progresses into his 30s he's someone that I might want to keep an eye on and finally I'd recommend a change in formation putting Bowen into a false nine position until January allowing for a bit more creativity once again that is actually a really interesting point and one thing I hadn't considered I've spoken not just at the beginning of this episode but at length in other episodes that being the sole single striker up front just doesn't really seem to fit Jared Bowen's game evidenced by the fact he's only got two goals in six appearances and so maybe it might be time for me to consider moving away from this default West Ham setup to try and create my own custom tactic. Now with Lucas Paqueta offering us the versatility to be able to play also in a central midfield position I'm just going to drop him back here which will then hopefully allow me to just drop Jared Bowen back a little bit further. I'll change his instructions to be focused on becoming more of a false nine and then I'll try and push the likes of Somerville and Mohamed Kudos right up high into the wing positions to try and offer us as much width as possible. It's a very interesting setup and one that differs quite significantly from the more default system and with us sitting fairly comfortably in seventh position in the Premier League it's quite a bold decision to make just six games into the new campaign but on this career mode we live and die by our bold decisions and so that is why ahead of our very next game in the Carabao Cup against Stevenage I'm going to move away from the default 4-2-3-1 system into this more tiki tacker. 4-3-3 false 9 system that will hopefully translate to better performances and better results on the pitch. And if this opening game against Stevenage is anything to go by, it seems like defensively we've got a little bit more solidity, but perhaps up front we've still got a bit of work to do, but we do manage to scrape through on penalties, 3-0. It's a big return to form though in the Premier League as we notch up our first three points of the episode, beating Sheffield United at home 2-0. And it's our third win of the episode, another clean sheet and another 2-0 victory, this time Danny Ings and James Ward-Prowse getting on the score sheet as we beat Dynamo Gear away from 
from home in the Europa League. But now it's time for the really big test as we are back at home in the London Stadium, back in the Premier League, this time against a very tough opposition in Newcastle United. It's a wonderful opportunity for these players to really show that this change in formation was the right decision. And hopefully Jared Bowen can find his goal scoring form once again to give us a much needed three points here today. And it is my usual starting 11 that will take the pitch against Newcastle United with only one change and that is Alvarez chipping in back in centre back with Kurt Zuma unfortunately being out with a slight knock and that means Thomas Socek comes back in in his more rightful position in central midfield. Here we go then a big game here today and depending on how well we get on in this new formation it may completely change some of our transfer plans heading into January about the type of striker we need to join the club. Into Paqueta who's dropped deep to get involved in the play. Kudos gets it back from him into Jared Bowen who of course playing in that false nine position manages to dance around the challenge of a couple of players and then his final ball wasn't good enough but uh, really good to see Jared Bowen getting involved early and showing that pressure and that relentless attitude to win the ball back and burn tried to play it down the line but Kudos read it really nicely and now feeds a ball into Paqueta on the right hand side he's got the option to get into the box here looking for the cutback into Jared Bowen on his right straight at the goalkeeper big chance Leon Bailey now for Newcastle seemingly make the switch over from Aston Villa and he's done a really good job of just bursting past Somerville and he's got the pace to try and get away from him but Somerville comes back across brilliant recovery defending from the left midfielder it's been a real stellar start to his life here at West Ham United as he plays a ball into Lucas Paqueta back into the channel of Somerville Somerville's looking for options though doesn't have any so in the end tries to go round the back of the Newcastle defence but Trippier does a really good job of intercepting and Sven Botman can bring it clear but Somerville is just relentless in his press as well this is exactly what I want to see from some of the young players here at West Ham United as Hall down the line into Joe Linton on the left on the left hand side sorry Bruno Grimarias now in the centre wriggling away from a couple of challenges Kudos wins it back well, Newcastle can't seem to form any decent partners here today as uh, Joe Linton wins it back from Ajerd keeps hold of the ball Miley now has it into the path of Alexander he's at the danger man Leon Bailey with a big strike Ariola though right into his arms and he says thank you very much into Jared Bowen who's gone very deep arguably too deep almost ran himself into a little bit of trouble but uh, won it back and now Lucas Paqueta to bring it down the right hand side Kudos has managed to stay onside here as he got the pace to try and get into the box he's going to try and cut this one back done a really good job of doing so plays it into the path of Lucas Paqueta lines up a strike on his left big save well we've got five minutes remaining of this first half and at the moment both teams unable to break the deadlock who's thrown in Azure tried to win it back in the end, his looping header fell very nicely into the arms of Karius. Alexander Isak, lovely ball around the corner, and Joe Linton's clean through here. He's completely beaten by defence. Joe Linton, Ariola came out, though. Brilliant goalkeeping, and that has kept the scores at nil-nil. Lovely stuff. Well, I'll tell you what, we are very, very lucky to have the scores still remaining at nil-nil. Joe Linton clean through there, but didn't have the composure to just lift it over the on-rushing Ariola. Really good goalkeeping in the end. And hopefully we can try and see if we can break the deadlock here in the second half as Kudos wriggles away from a challenge, wriggles away from two challenges and continues his run down the right side. He's just slightly overrun it and in the end gives it away for a Newcastle goal kick. Alvarez, oh, in a bit of trouble, loses it to Alexander Isak in a really dangerous position here. And now the Swedish man can try to bring it forward. He flicks it back though into the path of Miley. Miley manages to get away from a couple of challenges, but Emerson wins it back. Newcastle have a free kick here in a very dangerous position that Leon Bailey is going to be the man to step up and take it. It looks like he's going to go for goal here, floats it over the top, gets it all wrong. Well, it remains nil-nil here inside the opening 55 minutes. Need the team able to break the deadlock as Somerville now picks it up once again on the left-hand side, plays it into James Ward-Prowse. The ball is floated up into the air and Joe Linton now wins it back in the centre, but Paqueta also wins it back and now Socek to try and bring it forward. He plays it into Jared Bowen who tries to release Kudos around the corner in the end. It was good defending from Newcastle as Miley now brings it clear. End-to-end -end stuff here in this second half with both teams frantically trying to see if they can break the deadlock. Well, with neither team able to do so, I am going to make a little bit of a tweak. I'm going to bring off Kudos who seems like he is running on fumes and I'm going to bring on Antonio up front. I'm going to try and shift him a little bit more up the field into a central striker and I'm going to change his role and his instruction to be more focused on being a bit of a target man. And with half an hour remaining Remaining on the clock, Jared Bowen now has a real opportunity to try and stake his claim for his rightful position, what he believes on the right-hand side of my midfield. Here in Trippier will have the throw, just over 70 minutes remaining on the clock as uh, James Walprouse wins it back in a really good position. And Jared Bowen, lovely touch to get away from the defender and finds a lovely ball into Antonio. Antonio now has the option, ah, oh, tried to play it across to the on-rushing Somerville, but it was well blocked off as Alvarez now picks it back up into James Walprouse, who's come deep, out wide to the left-hand side to Emerson. Somerville now cuts it back in, looks for James Ward Prowse finds James Ward Prowse and the Englishman plays it across to Antonio who's in the box now Antonio with the opportunity doesn't have the composure to find a way past Carrius. well
well with just over 10 minutes remaining on the clock here. James Ward Prass, the set piece specialist, to throw it back in. Looking for the big head of Antonio. He's just muscled off of it though by Joe Linson. Somerville will pick up the loose ball and he'll throw it back into the path of James Ward Prass, who floats it back across. Looking for Socek and Thomas Socek on on his first start in several games comes in and puts a header into the back of the net that could well be the difference here today. Look at the crowd, they've gone absolutely wild and rightly so. Thomas Socek, who has lost his place in the starting 11 to James Ward Prowse, who's moved back into central midfield, showed what physicality in midfield means by just ghosting into the box and using his height to just give us a towering header into the back of the net that the goalkeeper had no chance with. He's delighted, so am I, 1-0. Into Bruno Guimaraes now to try and bring this one forward and he skipped away from the challenge of that man, Thomas Socek here, and he skipped away from a challenge of James Ward Prowse, really nicely done by the young man, and he skipped away from three challenges, he's gone, my word, it's absolutely brilliant play in the heart of midfield from that young man, but Antonio now wins it back, we've got an opportunity to try and hit them on the counter, but Jared Bowen's lost it in a really dangerous position, Joe Linton, back into Anthony Gordon, Gordon round the corner into Alexander Isak, Bruno Guimaraes has it against Socek though, with a huge challenge, he's been my man of the match so far, as the referee blows for full time, well it's a hard fought victory, and one that Eddie Howe cannot believe his team have lost, just one goal separating the two teams and it is courtesy of that man Thomas Socek who stepped up in the most pivotal time in the game to give us a 1-0 lead at full time. Well since losing his place in the starting 11 at the very beginning of the season Thomas Socek has been relegated to appearances off the bench both in the Premier League and in all the cup competitions his goal against Newcastle just went to show how important it is to have that extra height and physicality in the centre of the park. He ghosted into the penalty area unopposed and it was a wonderful header to give us a much needed 3 points one thing that has really interested me though since this change to this 4-3-3 force 9 system is that whilst it hasn't exactly excelled our attacking players to try and find the back of the net more often it has seemed to really help our more defence minded players with us keeping another clean sheet against Newcastle our fourth so far in as many games and it's helped Ariola to become the clean sheet leader in the first 8 matches of the Premier League keeping 5 clean sheets in a brilliant start to his campaign and with that victory lifting us up into 6th place level on points with Liverpool and just 1 point behind Manchester United in the fight for the final Champions League spot. Could West Ham United really be on for a very exciting season? The most exciting thing about this episode, though, and about this change in formation is the opportunity to give this man, Jared Bowen, the chance to try and stake his claim as my number one striker in the team in a system that might suit him a little bit better. And whilst going forward, we haven't exactly set the world alight so far in our opening four games. Should we start to keep even more clean sheets and should we really start to see some positive results with this change in system? Who knows? It might even have a dramatic change in the type of striker you would like to see plying their trade in a West Ham United shirt this season and after another hard fought draw this time one all away from home against Aston Villa to extend our unbeaten run further we get back to our clean sheet winning ways courtesy of a 1-0 victory away from home in the Europa League against Freiburg and with Jared Bowen getting on the score sheet twice in the second half against Everton as we managed to beat them 2-1 is the young man really starting to get accustomed to this new system and finally it seems like West Ham are just unstoppable this episode the wins keep coming the clean sheets keep coming 3-0 in the Carabao Cup against Sheffield United. Or perhaps this new formation change has proved to be an inspired decision. We're through to the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup, but we'll be facing off once again against Newcastle United. And we're unbeaten in all competitions since losing to Liverpool 10 games into the Premier League campaign. We are in fifth place, level on points with Spurs in fourth. And it looks like Jared Bowen has finally come alive. He's lifted himself up to the top of our goal-scoring charts. Five goals in just 10 Premier League appearances. And with us having the best defensive record in the Premier League, only conceding seven goals so far. Could West Ham season really be starting to pick up and move in the right direction? But we're going to find out once again as we are going to be put to the test away from home in our very next game against Brentford at the G-Tech Community Stadium. And with a little bit of fatigue creeping into my back line once again, I've decided to go with the tried and trusted tactic that got me the win against Newcastle. And that is dropping Alvarez into that centre-back position allowing Socek to move into central midfield with Kurt Zuma coming back in in place of the likes of Ejerd and Mavropanos who both dropped to the bench. Jan out, being chased down by Lucas Paqueta as is their right back. Relentless pressure here early doors inside the opening five to ten minutes here for West Ham but Brentford have managed to wriggle away from a couple of challenges and find their way into my half but it's Kudos who's come central and won the ball back but instead given away a free kick here that Brentford are going to take with Ivan Sony. Perhaps he's a man that they would want in the box. I'm very happy to see that man taking the free kick from such a deep position as Alvarez wins the ball back really well and then ends up losing it. Jared Bowen 
And now Regulon to bring it forward for Brentford. They've started the better of the two teams here. They find themselves in the ascendancy and they find themselves in my half. Ivan Sony over to Ruislev on the right-hand side. It's Emerson who comes across with a crunching challenge but doesn't manage to win the ball back. They've got another opportunity to play it inside. But this time Emerson gets it right with a challenge. Really nicely done by the young man. And he's got the pace now to try and burst away from Ivan Sony but doesn't have the composure to keep the ball in the pitch. Kudos into Paqueta. Paqueta into Jared Bowen. Around the corner into James Ward-Prowse. Really nicely done to get away from a really tight and narrow area in midfield. As Alvarez now to bring this one forward. He's been chased down by Ivan Tony, but he's got the uh, he's got the pace and the acceleration and the strength to get away from him. As Lucas Paqueta now tries to find some space inside the box, cuts it back for Kudos straight against the defender. We got a corner. It's our first corner of the game and our first real opportunity now to try and see if we can find the back of the net. James Ward Prowse, though, unlike him, the set piece master gets it all wrong, but it falls to Somerville who tries to strike. What a save! Well, I thought the momentum of the attack had been completely lost there with James Ward Prowse getting the corner all wrong, but somehow we've managed to get back into it. And now we had another corner, but Somerville will pick up the scraps, plays it back into the path of James Ward-Prowse, who's going to fire it back across, looking for Lucas Paqueta on the head, can't quite get there as the keeper manages to just grab hold of it with both hands. Somerville now to play it into the path of James Ward-Prowse, it was a bit of a tight area of the pitch though for him to play it into and James Ward-Prowse lost it and now Brentford can bring it forward with that man Ivan Sony, who's managed to go past two of my players, he's taken out by Emerson, they will have a free kick in a very dangerous position here that of course now I'm a little bit more concerned that it is this man Ivan Sony stepping up this is an opportunity for him to strike from distance, it's rolled into his path by Regulon. He does strike in the end. It's easy though for Ariola. Down the left hand side into Somerville. Somerville now into Jared Bowen. Plays it back into the path of Emerson. Back into Jared Bowen. And Jared Bowen now can try and streak away. And he done the hard work and then gave it straight away to Jan Out. Not what I would need from the English international. As now they bring it forward once again. Mope into the path of Avinsoni. Into Jensen. Jensen out wide into Regulon on the left hand side. He's got the pace to get away from Michael Van Aweg. He's thrown into the box. Good header down. Straight into the arms of the goalkeeper though. That was a big chance for Brentford. If he had just put it either side of the goalkeeper, it probably would have been 1 0. Regulon once again for Brentford down this left hand side. This is where all of their main attacks have come from. It's blocked off though this time by Van Aweg. Really good defending as the referee blows for half time. This game has not been as straightforward as I had hoped. We come into it. Full of momentum and positivity, but we haven't quite been able to find our shooting boots and our passing range so far today. Our creativity has been very much stifled, and I've got to hope that we can put a stop to that here in the second half. As Somerville now has the opportunity to drive into the box here, checks in on his right, goes to strike. It was blocked off in the end. Could he have got his head up and maybe found a pass into the box? Wasn't able to, though, and Brentford get it clear. Emerson has it now. Much better start here in the beginning of the second half. Jared Bowen's come deep, releases it into James Ward Prowse now, who bursts into the box, looking for the cut back into Lucas Paqueta. Oh, look around the corner into Jared Bowen. Well blocked off, though, by Yanel, who several occasions so far in this game has just been in the right place at the right time to either block or intercept. Brentford now starting to turn the screw and starting to press here and find their way back into the game here in the second half. Regulon on the left-hand side tries to go past Van Awig. Doesn't manage to, but then he goes and gives the ball away. Mope. Gives it to Ivan Sony, the danger man. Plays it into one of their players, but in the end, it was a good challenge by James Ward-Prowse. And Somerville can bring this one clear. Jared Bowen coming deep to collect. He's got an option of Somerville if he can find him. Looks for the ball over the top. Pinnock, though, really good defending from that man. Somerville can't get on the end of it. And once again, Brentford get it clear. Mope now, end-to-end -end stuff here in this second half. It looks like either of these two teams could get the goal that could be the difference maker here today as now Ivan Tony has it in a really dangerous position I tried to put a challenge in it wasn't good enough but Ariola outstretched once again so eager to continue his streak as the clean sheet leader here in the Premier League Van Awick that's a kudos on the right hand side he's got space to run into here has he got the stamina and the speed to continue his run no he doesn't but he checks inside looking for some sort of option he finds the option of Jared Bowen can he find his run into the box he looked for the cut back into the onrushing James Ward Prowse but just got the pass wrong could he have struck Maybe he should have, and maybe a more natural striker would have been more clinical in that position. Regulon down the left-hand side once again. He's got the quick feet to get away from Jared Bowen, but not to get away from Michael Van Awig. Now, Socek plays it short into Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen has an option in field if he can find the option of Paqueta. Not the right ball whatsoever. Poor in the final third has really been the story of this game for us. But frustratingly enough, the referee calls time on this game. It finishes nil-nil. On a positive note, we keep another clean sheet away from home. But once again, it seems to be a real struggle for me in front of goal as it finishes here at full time, nil-nil. Well, it's ironic in our bid to become a more controlled possession-based team and try and excite the fans with some attacking play. We've actually become even more defensively solid, keeping another clean sheet that helps us extend our unbeaten run. As I said before, it seems like in the sim games, Jared Bowen seems to be performing at a high level. But whenever I seem to play, I cannot quite get used to him being my central striker. And I still feel that at the moment for me, that 
that is the missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle that I need to really try and take this team to the next level in the second half of the season. Until then, we've still got some more games to get through then, including this one winning once again against Freiburg in the Europa League. 2-1 this time at home. And we continue our fine run of form, as does Jared Bowen in these Sim games. His two goals, both at the very beginning and the very end of the game, is enough to give us a 2-0 victory and another clean sheet and another three points against Nottingham Forest. And the goals just keep on coming. Jared Bowen, James Ward-Prowse and Emerson all getting on the score sheet. It's another clean sheet. It's 3-0 this time away from home against Burnley. And with Danny Ings getting on the score sheet twice to give us a 2-1 away victory back in the Europa League. With one game remaining in the group stage, we have confirmed our spot in the knockout stages, topping the group. Five games, five victories, 12 goals and just two conceded. What a way to start our Europa League campaign. And it seems like after such a positive run of results, the Premier League have decided to award me for the first time in my West Ham career, Manager of the Month. And with us usurping our arch rival Spurs into the final Champions League spot in the Premier League up to fourth, it's not hard to see why. And as we welcome Crystal Palace to a wet and windy London Stadium in East London here today in our final game of this episode. It is the final chance this episode for the likes of Jared Bowen and some of my more attacking players to try and prove themselves in this new 4-3-3 false nine system to try and show that this is the long-term future of West Ham United. And once again, there will be no changes to the starting 11 that drew against Burnley. As you can see, Ariola starting goal, Van Ewig, Alvarez, Zuma and Emerson at the back, James Ward-Prowse and Socek starting midfield alongside Lucas Paquetza. Some of them on the left, Kudos on the right and Jared Bowen in that false nine position up front. Here we go then, the last game of the episode and the last opportunity for me to try and get used to this system. It seems like we're doing really well in sim games, but I can't quite get to grips with it so far in the games that I've played. But hopefully Alvarez can be the man to try and help me do so as he tries to play it down the line. But it's well intercepted by Mitchell and now Franca can get it away for Crystal Palace. But Kudos does a really good job of working really hard defensively to win it back. And now Lucas Paqueta plays it out to Somerville on the left hand side. Looking for the overlapping run of Emerson. Finds that run. He's going to try and check back inside. I was looking for James Ward Prowse. It was well defended though. And now Crystal Palace can get it clear with Lerma. And now they've got Eze on the right hand side who's unopposed here. Emerson frantically trying to get back. But Eze has the skill and agility to get round him now. Somerville trying to track back. Manages to get away from Nunos. And Nunos though manages just to bundle his way through through, tries to play it back inside, looks for Eze, Eze shifts it onto his right, what a strike, what a save from Ariola, I thought that was going to be a fabulous way for Crystal Palace to give themselves a 1-0 lead here inside the opening 15 minutes, down the line into Kudos, he's got space here to run into, has he got the beating of Anderson for pace, it looks like he does, but Anderson doing a really good job of continuing to track him, Kudos though checks it back in for Lucas Paqueta, he finds James Ward-Prowse, looking to try and turn it around the corner into Jared Bowen, ah, look for the run of Socek, almost found him, but once again the low block of Crystal Palace just about manages to snuff out the danger. Mitchell into Anderson yet again. Anderson though under a bit of pressure from Kudos in the end. Had to go right the way back to Henderson who can do nothing but hack it clear. This is exactly the sort of pressing that I want to see from this West Ham team. What a big header there from Kurt Zuma into Paqueta on his right. Oh that is arguably one of the goals of the season we've scored. Lucas Paqueta with the toe poke ran the goalkeeper to give us a 1-0 lead. Well the crowd got absolutely nuts and rightfully so. Lucas Paqueta how did he generate that sort of power? The goalkeeper cannot quite believe it. It was a lovely ball round the corner from James Ward-Prowse. And it was just a toe poke from Lucas Paqueta. Bent it round the goalkeeper. Beautiful finish from the Brazilian. Goalkeeper had no chance. 1-0. Mitchell, though, wins it high for Crystal Palace. Odewald now has it. Looks to try and play it back into Mitchell. He's in an offside position, though, so allows Franco with the overlap to get onto it. He stayed onside, and Kurt Zuma is frantically trying to check him back. But now Anderson has it back on the left-hand side into Franca. Crystal Palace looking to strike back with immediate effect here as Odewald tries to burst to the edge of the box. Kurt Zuma trying to stay strong, but not strong enough as he ends up falling over inside the penalty area. Tyrick Mitchell, though, just overplayed it a little bit, and now Kudos can bring this one away. He's got the pace to just burst away from the Crystal Palace defenders as the referee he blows his whistle. Is there a foul? Well, it doesn't look like there's a foul. It looks like Kurt Zuma is down injured. He's holding his knee. And that is not the sight I need for the West Ham captain. Well, he's held the defence together brilliantly, but it looks like he's fallen really badly. It's either on his ankle or his knee. I'm not quite sure. But unfortunately, I'm having to make a substitute again. He's going to come on here. And that is not the sort of story that we need. Kurt Zuma has held my defence really well together so far in the opening half of the campaign. I've got to hope that that is not going to have catastrophic long-term effects 
on my team. Van Aywig now to burst down the right-hand side. Crystal Palace looks like they've been undone here down the right. He doesn't really have too many options in the box, though, so checks it back. I was looking for the ball into Jared Bowen, but it falls to Paqueta. Now it's into James Ward-Prowse, who tries to hit the volley. In the end, smashed it against the defender. Emerson tries to win it, but the referee calls for half-time. So as we start the second half, it's been a pretty decent opening 45 minutes. We've dominated the game, and we've had the opportunities to get ourselves 1-0 up here. We've got to make sure that we continue a professional job here, but we're going to have to do it without our captain, our leader of men, Kurt Zuma. And potentially, well, no, <laughs> uh, Somerville was very, very lucky there not to be injured, as that was an absolute disgrace of a challenge. But we've managed to hold on to the ball, and the referee has played advantage. Emerson tried to head it down. Advantage in the end was not one for us, and now Crystal Palace can try and bring this one away with Munoz down the right hand side. But the referee will blow, and he will give Adam Wharton a yellow card for what was an absolute shambles of a challenge. Lucas Paqueta around the corner into the path of Kudos, who's been uncharacteristically quiet so far in this game. But he's going to try and see if he can look for the overlapping run of Van Awig. Van Awig looked to play it into the channel. He's found Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen on his right, forced the keeper into a really good stop. Lucas Paqueta is going to take the corner here on the left hand side, floats it in, looking for the head of that man, Jared Bowen. It falls to Socek. Oh, Socek's put it wide. Well, he cannot believe it. He did all the hard work. He took it down. Look at that for a touch away from the defender. And then all he had to do was just put it straight down the barrel. But he just dragged it wide. Socek again into Paqueta, who took it really nicely. Waiting for the overlap. Finds the overlap of Kudos now. And the young man can burst into the box. Has he got any options? Looking for the cutback. Ah, almost found the cutback to James Ward-Prowse. But it was really well intercepted. Eze now for Palace. Down the right-hand side. We have to remember for all these chances... We are only 1-0 up here and we have to make sure that we continue our fine form defensively to make sure we keep this clean sheet as James Ward-Prowse unexpectedly gives the ball away in a dangerous position as Paqueta now feeds in. Jared Bowen cuts it back into Lucas Paqueta, tries to bundle his way through. We just can't seem to cut through this Crystal Palace defence here in the second half. It's played into the path of Jordan Ayew. He's being chased down by Socek but manages to find a ball out to the left-hand side of Mitchell who manages just to ghost past Van Awig now who's frantically trying to defend but it's floated into the box into Oda. Ward, blocked off by a shirt here and now we get it away again we have to remember that we are only 1-0 up here as Kudos is now played down the right hand side he's got the pace can we try and see if we can hit them on the counter attack he's going to cut it back into the path of Jared Bowen tries to switch it on his right but it's good defending from Richards he keeps hold of the ball Paqueta now back into the path of Socek we've kept the ball alive James Ward-Prowse onto his left goes to strike Richards is there again in the right place at the right time as the Crystal Palace defence hold firm in the second half it's Eze now who's come deep to try and collect the ball and he's played a fabulous ball over the top but it's well read in the end by the right back Van Awig. So check we are now down into the final five minutes of this game plus stoppage time. Lucas Paqueta into James Ward-Prowse plays it down the channel back into Lucas Paqueta who's going to go out to the left hand side of Emerson. Keeps it in play. Left back Emerson back into Paqueta. Some really heavy challenges coming in from the Crystal Palace players here. Jared Bowen tries to feed it in onto his right to get into the box. Plays the cut back into Kudos on his left. Strikes it against the defender. Jared Bowen's offside. But it does not matter because the referee has decided to call time on what has been an exact exhilarating game. Look at the celebration from the West Ham players. They know just how important that victory was. As against our London rivals, Crystal Palace, we beat them 1-0. It's another clean sheet and another positive performance that now lifts us into third place in the Premier League. Just one point behind the league leaders, Aston Villa. But the bad news is an injury, a big injury to Kurt Zuma that means he is going to be out for the next two months. So with him out for the foreseeable future, and with £43 million still left remaining in the budget with us heading into the January transfer window, should I continue with my plan of trying to bring in a big name striker to lead the line for us? Or should I switch tact and try and see if I can bring in a centre-back to try and replace him over the second half of the season? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. But that is it for the end of today's episode. Thank you everyone for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you again next time.